now we'll define what are the different types of risks when you go for an investment in a bond security first and foremost is the credit risk because this is a uh, very clear because uh, you are a borrower to the company the company is borrowing a money uh, borrowing money from you so the most important thing is you ha you have to look at the credibility of the company right so suppose a heavily debted kingfisher comes out uh, with its uh, with its uh, debt security in the market so it is very much advisable that you will not be investing in that bond because of its high low uh, because of its high risk because you know how, how credible is that company kingfisher but if you find a company like uh, tata sons come out in the market with its bond security then you'll find that the credibility of that company is higher so that actually defines the credit risk which can be again broken down into two types of risk which is the default risk and the credit downgrade risk default risk is of a more severe kind of risk where you uh, you have a clear indication that you will not be getting the money which you had invested means that there is a high chance that the issuer will default on its payments may be it the coupon payments which is payable periodically or the redemption amount which is payable at the end of the tenure so how will you be able to understand the default risk the only way possible is you should have done a proper analysis of its financials its its past uh, financial history how it has be how it has uh, met its uh, debt obligations how was its payment history the most important uh, thing is the debt to equity ratio you can look at it if it's heavily indebted it there is a very high chance that it will not be able to uh, meet the debt obligations if it borrows more from the market so these are some of the important terms which gives you an indication of how much that bond is uh, exposed to the default risk similarly another uh, risk in uh, terms of credit risk is the credit downgrade risk now in downgrade what we mean by downgrade each bond or debt security is given a rating a credit rating by different credit rating agencies which gives you an idea what is the credit quality of that of that issuer mainly in india we find there are three credit rating agencies one is crisil other one is care and the third one is icra there are some more uh, credit rating agencies which uh, have uh, arrived in the market someone like uh, you have brickworks which pro which is now providing uh, credit rating for new issuances coming out in the market so basically what do they do they give you a rating which gives you a comfort level whether you should invest in that security so uh, and the periodically track the company and see whether the rating provided by the company initially the issuer is able is actually meeting the rating actually or not yeah uh, mr shanti broto mohan Uh, has a has a question to us he asked that what is the difference between internal risk and external risk that is also an important uh, thing uh, related to a bond investment uh, very in very simple terms internal risk is basically what is the risk in inherent in the company which is actually at the hands of the company it, it will be able to improve or will able to get over that risk that is the internal risk but external risk are like uh, some uh, thing related to the sovereign risk uh, suppose uh, 
Reliance Industries has a very good uh, credit rating, but it is present in India. So suppose India uh, undergoes through a difficult period. So what will happen is the company which is Reliance Industries will also get affected. So th that is the external risk to which the to which that uh, company is exposed to, which is not actually at the hands of the company and no one can actually foresee that but internal risk is actually what we can uh, we can measure by looking at the various financial aspects of the company the management is also very important aspects which give you a, a very good idea whether the company has a good future or not so uh, if the management has a very laid back kind of people this means that there, there is a very there, there is a very low prospect of that company but if the management consists of very dynamic and uh, educated people this means that the company has a good future and it will be able to meet its debt obligations let's move on to the next slide uh, before, but before that i'll just uh, give I'll just give you a brief idea about what are the different uh, credit ratings given to different instruments in India's market the first and the most uh, the highest uh, rating which is given to any uh, security is the sovereign sovereign rating which is actually given to the government and the state government securities which are issued in in the market which is the more which can be called as the most secure most secure in the sense we uh, the credit rating agencies define a term which is called the probability of default so whichever security has a very low probability of default that is given the highest credit rating so the sovereign rating which is given to any security shows that it has a very low chance of default after uh, sovereign rating comes triple a rating triple a is just after uh, the sovereign rating and it is mostly given to corporate bonds and it is the highest rating possible uh, for a corporate bond so mostly companies like tata sons is given a triple a rating pfc power finance company which is a government entity is given a triple a rating state bank of india which is the largest bank in india largest psu bank is given a triple a rating other banks like icici hdfc bank are also triple a rated so uh, in the corporate bond market this is the highest uh, rating possible and it is given to the most uh, uh, to the companies which are whose financials are most sound second after triple a comes double a plus rating which is just a notch lower than triple a they may not be as secure as triple a but they have a bit of very low difference between triple a securities then after double a plus comes double a and then double a minus then a plus a a minus and then comes triple b plus which is the which is the lowest investment grade category after triple a triple b plus whatever rating is given it is more or less not a investment grade category triple b plus is considered as the threshold for investment in any bond security uh, in in case uh, in case of uh, global credit rating agencies they have a different uh, kind of uh, measuring the credit rating of of a country like for india it is given just the credit, uh, investment grade category of triple b and they also give uh, an insight whether they are positive or negative or neutral about the economy or the state of of the country so currently india is at the positive uh, outlook for this credit rating agencies and it is just at the investment grade category but in case of the bond market in india triple b plus is considered as the threshold for investment 
and anything lower than that is more or less uh, equal to a junk category the lowest uh, category uh, lowest rating which can be given to any debt security is d which means that the probability of default is almost equals to 1 there is a 100% chance that if, if you invest in that security you'll not be able to recoup the money which you had invested you'll not be able to get the face value of that bond at the time of maturity a uh, very classic case in this uh, uh, sense we can make a very good analogy with Kingfisher or if you want to take it at a broader level we can take it for Greece if you invest in the security of Greece there is a very high chance that the country will not be able to pay any interest or give you the money back at the time of maturity yeah we have a question from Ankit Jaiswal he says that uh, the first one you said is uh, that is sovereign rating is for government bond and not for corporate bond yeah uh, the term itself is uh, uh, clearly uh, saying that sovereign is basically used for central government securities which are issued in the Indian market as well as state government securities so in India what we see uh, which we'll be discussing later on is central government issues bonds separately and state government the various states which are uh, there in India this issue their bonds separately but all of them are given a sovereign rating we like uh, we'll discuss why they are given a sovereign rating later on so let's uh, move to the next uh, type of risk uh, which is uh, inherent in any bond investment which is called the interest rate risk basically uh, what we see is the bond prices and yields have an inverse relationship so whenever the interest rates go up the bond prices go down so uh, so uh, so what we see is uh, if the RBI comes with a rate cut what happens actually is the interest rates are going down so what we see is the prices will go up it just has an inverse relationship another thing which uh, affects interest rate uh, risk of a bond is <coughs> just a moment uh, yeah uh, uh, one, uh, one more uh, criteria for measuring the interest rate risk is the maturity of a bond long-term bonds have more interest rate risks because you're exposed to the uh, coupon payments the cash flows for a longer period of time so there is a higher amount of uncertainty involved when you invest in a long-term bond which is not the case in case of short-term bonds because you are exposed to that uncertainty for a l shorter period of time so we can easily say that interest rate risk for a long term bonds is higher than the interest rate risk for a short term bonds similarly for uh, uh, if if you want to measure the interest interest rate risk in terms of coupon rates of a bond what we'll see is for a low, lower coupon bonds the interest rate risk is higher than for a higher coupon bond because in this case you are able to actually recoup whatever you, are, you had invested in a very short period of time suppose a bond is giving you a coupon of 5% for 10 years right and another bond is giving you a coupon of 9% for 10 years so what you are seeing in, in, in the second case which is the 9% coupon interest is that every year you are getting 9 rupees and so in the course of 10 years if you get 9 rupees every year at least you are getting 90 rupees out of the 100 rupees you had, in, you had invested but in case of the lower coupon bond which is the 5% coupon bond you will be able to get only 50 rupees 5 in each year so that is why the interest rate risk is higher in case of lower co rate coupon bonds so basically what we have uh, understood from this uh, slide is the higher the maturity of a bond the higher interest rate risk it is exposed to and the lower the coupon rate of the bond the higher the interest rate risk it is exposed to next is the reinvestment risk 
basically what does it mean uh, in case of bonds as I said for a coupon bearing bonds coupon bearing bonds in the sense where the coupon rate is defined 9% 10% 11% payable annually semi annually in this case for you get a coupon interest payment a cash flow cash inflow every period this inflow cannot be kept idle you have to reinvest it just a moment so you have to reinvest the inflows whatever you have invested and that that is where the reinvestment risk comes because you don't know at what levels at what interest rate will you be able to reinvest the inflows when they come to you so suppose you invested in a security at a yield of 9% today which is giving you a coupon of suppose 8.5% every year so once in the next year this 8.5 rupees comes you don't know at what interest rate you'll be able to reinvest it so that is where the reinvestment risk comes into play which is the major drawback of calculating the YTM YTM as I said is the yield to maturity if you hold the bond till maturity what yield you are generating or the return which you are generating is called the YTM in so in whenever like the uh, the cash flow example which I explained before where we match the initial outgo with the inflows periodically we assume that the YTM the reinvestment rate remains constant which is the basic assumption which we had taken into account and that cannot that may not be true for the actual return you are generating at the time of maturity the best thing is zero coupon bonds have no reinvestment risk zero coupon bonds are bonds which do not pay any coupon interest at any period whatever uh, suppose uh, and the in the yield is calculated as a cumulative amount you are getting at the time of maturity so suppose you invest you invest in a bond at a price of 38 rupees and you get 100 rupees at the time of maturity that 62 rupees which is getting uh, cumulated and uh, giving you a return at the time of maturity from that you can calculate the yield of the return of the bond so zero coupon bonds do not have any reinvestment risk because the coupon inflows which uh, there are no coupon inflows so you do not have to reinvest the coupons again